Je suis Sako Sniper, je mange le pomme de terre. That's just all I can do. <laughs> what a great start to the video. Anyway, anti-French banter aside, today we're going to be taking a look at the Mirage 2000 CS5, a plane which shockingly, shockingly, isn't shit. This breaks the trend with the majority of the top tier French aircraft, which are kind of just, it's just suffering to play them. But I'm very happy to say that with the Mirage 2000, it's actually a very pleasant experience. And as a result, my French bashing will be kept to a minimum throughout the video. Anyway, the Mirage is a rank seven jet fighter located at battery rating 11.3, obviously in the French tech tree. This is the newest top tier fighter for the French nation, so it's going to cost you a shit ton of research points, 410,000 to be exact, and then you'll have to purchase it for the cost of 1 million and 100,000 silver lions. The plane will come stock, and you will have to grind it out to unlock its full potential. To put it in your lineup, it'll cost you 310,000 silver lions, and for the expert in his qualifications, which I do think are necessary for top tier jets, it's 1,100,000 silver lines for the expert quali and 3,400 golden eagles for the ace qualification. For those of you who are unaware, the Mirage 2000 is kind of like the Israeli Kefir. It has the same sort of power to weight ratio, but it has a slightly better wing area, I believe, and it's also got leading edge slats. Not to mention the fantastic radar and Magic 2 missiles. So, with this combination of features, is it actually worth investing in the French tech tree? Or should you just stick to the big nation in War Thunder? That's right, the British. Alright lads, welcome back. The Mirage 2K is powered by the Snecma M53 P2. At military power, this produces 6,200 kilos of thrust, and when after burning, that increases to 9,690 kilos. This probably doesn't mean much to you as a raw statistic, but I think it has a slightly less power to weight ratio or thrust to weight ratio than the Kafir in the Israeli tech tree. This means in game, much like all of the other Mirages, the 2000 has insane amounts of acceleration. Not only is this good for climbing at the start of a game, but it also allows you to dogfight a little bit and not have to worry about bleeding too much energy. That's another thing about this Mirage. It seems to hold its energy a lot better than some of the earlier Mirage variants. And with its leading edge slats, it actually feels like you can actually turn in this thing, rather than just pull AOA. You still do retain the ability to pull a high amount of AOA, but you also have a pretty good sustained turn rate if you wish. Again, in top tier jet combat, you don't really want to be turn fighting anything. But to me, the Mirage 2K feels like a little bit of a hybrid between the Kefir and the F5E. It's got great acceleration, pretty good turn rate, not the best compared to some of the smaller aircraft, but you can turn against like the bigger planes that are currently at top tier. Again, no lads, just because your aircraft can turn doesn't mean it's always a good idea to do. The Mirage is also pretty fast, not that that matters anymore in top tier. The performance and dominance of aircraft is now determined more by the performance of the missiles rather than the actual planes themselves. But in terms of top speed, the Mirage isn't the fastest. I think its rip speeds are a little bit too low. It's never really been an issue for me though. Pretty much everything you can't outrun, you can outturn it or at least reverse it pretty easily. Maybe with the exception of the F-14 or the MiG-23 MLD. But as I said, sheer performance isn't really that important anymore when it comes to the actual dominance of a plane. So what about the weaponry available to the Mirage 2K? Well, as it's becoming incredibly popular at top tier, mainly due to how the meta is shifting towards it, let's start with the capabilities of the radar. The 2K has a Thompson CSF RDI. I believe this radar is even more capable than the radar found on the F-14. And as I'm sure if you've played top tier War Thunder recently, you know that it's incredibly hard to break the lock if you're going up against one of these bastards. This makes the Mirage 2K incredibly dangerous when it's using its semi-active radar homing missiles. Anyway, the radar has Lookdown, IFF, BVR and ACM modes. Most of these features are standard for top tier jets, but if you're a lay person you don't really know what understand the jets, basically it's incredibly hard to notch this radar. This means that climbing at the start of a jet game is now borderline suicidal, and if you watch my video on the Harrier GR7, 
You can notice that I stayed incredibly low and then popped up and shot my missiles, basically doing everything to hide from enemy radar. Which to give credit to Gaijin is kind of realistic, but for some reason, especially considering in Vietnam the Sparrows were absolutely dog shit, but in War Thunder they perform like bloody Amrams. Anyway lads, if we take a look at the pilot, and you have a CCIP for the cannons, rockets and bombs. This is welcomed, but rather redundant in my opinion, because ground attacking has never really been a strong point of the Mirages, and it's no different for this one. Another slight negative of this jet are the stock weapons, the 30mm Deathers. While these cannons do hit quite hard, they have a very low muzzle velocity, and because the meta at top tier is now borderline supersonic combat, it's very hard to aim shots using these cannons. I'd actually argue that it's actually worse than the 23mm found on the MiG-21s, because at least with those guns, they've got a much higher fire rate. We then move on to the bombs, and there's only one to choose from, the 250kg Samp P Type 25s. These bombs aren't very good to be honest, they only destroy a vehicle within a radius of 7 meters. Luckily though, you do have that CCIP, so it should give you decent enough accuracy. We then have the Sneb Type 23 rockets. Again, you can only carry a very limited amount of these. They travel at 651 meters per second, and they have a TNT warhead containing 435 grams of TNT. This filler, combined with the high explosive anti-tank warhead, gives this rocket at 400 millimeters of penetration. Again, pretty decent, but nothing too special in my opinion. We then come on to the Urtua missiles, and we have two of each type, two semi-active radar homing, and two IR guarded missiles. Your first SARH is actually the later model, the Matra Super 530F. This is the same missile that's found on the Mirage F1C. This missile uses a pulse signal. This relates to the guidance of the missile itself. Basically, the pulse type radar currently in War Thunder is very easily countered with chaffing. This is where the next missile comes in. The Matra 530D is actually an earlier variant of the missile, but because this one uses a constant wave compared to the pulse, it's much harder to notch and chaff this missile, making it much more deadly in game. There are a few differences between the D and the F, the D gets a little bit more maximum overload and a little bit more speed, but the main differences between the two missiles is the guidance. So the great radar of the Mirage 2K, as well as the constant wave guidance of the Matra 530D, as I said, it makes this plane incredibly dangerous in a head-on, or against enemy opponent that is at high altitude. So again, I'd strongly recommend for everyone playing at top tier to stay as low as possible, to make it as hard to get a radar lock on you. We then come on to the IR missiles, and we have the Matra Magics and the Matra Magic 2s. I'll focus on the Magic 2s because they are the go-to ones. They have an all aspect lock range of 3km and a rear aspect lock range of 6km. The Magic 2s also have a maximum overload of 35Gs, and in many ways, these missiles are better than the American AM9Ls. The Magic 2 seem pretty immune from flurring, at least at close range, and with the recent buff to all Urtua missiles, they're incredibly lethal. Sadly, however, for the Mirage 2K, you can only carry two of these Magic 2 missiles, as well as two of the semi-active radar homing missiles. It would have been better to be able to carry four Magic 2s in my opinion, but I guess Guardian still had to find a way to screw over the French. Anyway, lads, that's it for the statistics. Let's get into the nit and gritty. Does the Mirage 2K have a pretty good lineup? Well, in my opinion, there are better options in the French tech tree for ground strike if you are going to take this out into ground realistic. Mainly the Jaguar A, it's got JDAMs. The Mirage doesn't really have any precision guided munitions, whereas the Jaguar A does, so I'd strongly recommend taking that instead of this. But I'd give it a solid 3 out of 5. The French top tier lineup is pretty decent, especially the Leclerc, I don't even know how you pronounce that. Every time I've done a video on the Leclerc, I've got angry French people shouting at me in the comments. Is the plane new player friendly? Well, in many ways it is. It's got fantastic radar, semi-active radar homing missiles, and probably the best IR guided missiles in the game. While no vehicle at top tier is new player friendly per se, mainly due to the nuances at top tier, but playing the Mirage 2000 is basically just a point and click adventure if you want to. Just make sure you aren't the first person to be spotted by the enemy team, and you should have a pretty good match every match. So I'd give it a four out of five. Is the Mirage good value for grinding time? Well, it's by far the best plane that the French have access to, and probably will be for a very long time. So if you're a French main, I'd strongly recommend grinding for this jet. Five out of five. Is the Mirage 2000 meta? Well, 
With semi-active radar homing coming back into the meta, after a year or two of basically being dead, it's fair to say that with the insane radar of this jet, as well as the match of 530Ds, it almost makes the Magic 2s almost your secondary weapons. You can easily get two kills with the 530Ds at the start of the game if the enemy is stupid enough to climb. Well, I wouldn't say that the Mirage is the best plane in the game, I'd certainly say that it is up there as one of the best, along with the F-14, the J-7E, and a couple of other jets, but it's certainly powerful, and most importantly lads, you can have a lot of fun playing this thing. 5 out of 5. And finally, the coolness rating. Something that historically, French vehicles haven't done too well with on my channel, but I'm going to have to say, this is an easy 4 out of 5. It's got much better lines than the previous Mirages, the stabiliser looks really cool, and it's even got some nice camouflages. So 4 out of 5, any day of the week. Anyway lads, to conclude, the Mirage 2K is a fantastic jet added to War Thunder. It's got fantastic missiles and radar, as well as incredibly good flight characteristics. While it certainly isn't the best jet, I'd say it is one of the best performing jets in the game, and certainly one of the most fun. And finally, thank you very much for watching this review lads. If you did enjoy it, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing, and be sure to let me know down in the comments what vehicles you would like to see reviewed next. And finally, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my YouTube channel members, Wolfie Fly, Joseph Metcalf, Tomster013, Just Someone, Dr. Bob, Deboa LX, Tans, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonsi. Thank you very much for becoming members, lads, and I'll see you in the next review.